Hey guys, Red Baron here with Red Baron Miles, and uh, this is a new format I'm going to be trying uh, with this video. So, uh, this is the Watamia 148 scale P47D Razorback I got from the model competition. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go through, through the sprues first. Um, this sprue is the basic sprue, or a d duplicate sprue where it's containing the wheels, the bombs, the tires, it looks like some part of like carburetor or something, flap actuators, and uh, drop tanks, and the machine gun barrels for the 50 cals that go in the wing. Uh, overall, there is no flash, uh, and the fit was actually really good. Uh, and I think that was a really good kit, a uh, good portion of the kit. Yeah, on to the next one. So here we have the wing part. Uh, the wings were actually in a few pieces. Uh, you had the this panel that went over like the landing gear and the wing tip, which I thought was weird. And then you had the usual uh, two half wings, the upper part and the bottom part. And then you also had the uh, Machine gun hole barrels on the leading edge, uh, and then on the trailing edge you had the flaps that were posable, in either the down, the retracted or the up position. I chose the down position on the flaps. Um, you also have the wing spars, which were two little short stubby things that would go back into the uh, gear well that would later make the backing of the gear well. Uh, yeah. And then you have the actuators for the landing gear doors and the gear and some of the gear doors. Uh, still no flashing. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so on this sprue, we have the propellers, uh, which they give you actually quite a few options for propellers. Uh, you got the spinner and the horizontal stabilizer. You have the big, I believe it's a 250-gallon drop tank. And you got the, the engine there. You got some sort of cooling system in some of the cockpit parts. Uh, you got the firewall. Uh, you got the landing gear for the tail wheel and you have the cockpit seat it's still good plastic you, oh yeah you also have the cowling I just now noticed that in the picture <laughs> oh. but yeah that's the sprue um So lastly, we have the uh, fuselage halves, and we have the back panel for the cockpit. You also have the instrument panel, uh, the dashboard, you have the floor, you have another part of the uh, fire, forward firewall, and uh, you have the cockpit sides on this sprue. Then you have the doors for the side intake on this as well, uh, which I, yeah, so that's the last of the sprue, now on to the build. Okay, so moving on to the interior part and the building part of the video. Uh, these are the sub-assemblies that I've laid out after painting and doing some of the sub-assemblies like uh, 
putting some of the stuff together on the sub-assemblies. Uh, so here we have the instrument panel, gun sight, rudder pedals, uh, both sides of the uh, cockpit, the floor, the stick, and the seat, and the seat back. So here we have the seat. Uh, what came with the kit was a decal uh, seat belt. First time I've ever seen anything like that. So I used it. Uh, seat was two pieces, the seat, and then you had the seat railing on the back. Uh, not the best picture, I think, that could have been taken, but it's what I got at the time. Um, you can tell it's probably about one millimeter, I don't know what that is, what measurement that is, but you know. So here we have the back of the, uh, seat with the yoke and the floor. Uh, I used, uh, Tamiya Green. For the interior uh, and brown. Then I used the tester's silver for the silver parts. I then went over it with a Vallejo panel line uh, wash uh, for dark vehicles. Um, and that actually, I think, came out like a pretty nice wash. Um, and then I used the red for that little fuel switch handle and the khaki for the, uh, for the fabric on the seat. So here are the side panels and the rudder pedals. Uh, what I used for the switches was I took a sharpened toothpick and I just used the toothpick as a fine point applicator. I actually find that tactic to be quite good for the small details instead of buying a one haired brush or making a one haired brush. Uh, but yeah, I used, uh, I think there's some yellow in there. Uh, I, I used all Tamiya paint except for the silver. Silver again was testers. Uh, it went together quite nicely. Uh, I think there's a little handle for the throttle in there. Uh, looks quite nice. Okay. Okay, so now on to the instrument panel and the gun sight. The gun sight was an all-clear piece of plastic. Uh, I used a... I, I actually didn't have any Tamiya black, so I used tested uh, gloss black for that and then the brown for the headrest on it. Then on the instrument panel, I, took, I cut out the individual little dials on the instrument panel and I just uh, put them in, in place uh, with a fine toothpick. And that was quite nice. On to the assembly part. Uh, here it is, assemble. Uh, I used Tamiya Extra Thin for all the assembly parts. Uh, it actually went together quite nicely. Uh, no fit issues like I was expecting. Uh, the brown you see is the is a little powder that I used that I found at my local hobby shop. It didn't have a brand name, I don't think. And if I did, I don't have the name of it. Okay, so this part here is the inside parts of the P-47. Uh, the yellow you're seeing is not really yellow. It's a yellow-green XF-4 Tamiya. Uh, it, it's part of the, it's kind of like a zinc chromate where it's the anti-corrodent. Uh, because those varied in color during the war. Uh, and what they hope to do is prevent rust from tearing through your aircraft. The yellow you're seeing on the wing spar, that's going to be the interior of the main gear well. Uh, that's going to be visible towards the inside part, towards the side. And then uh, you can see here the difference between the bubble top and the Razorback. Why it got its name, because of the sharp line that goes down towards the uh, empennage, towards the rudder. Uh, then it also had the birdcage canopy, which kind of wrapped mostly around, but not all the way around the pilot. So you'd have, so you, the pilot would have a harder time seeing behind him. 
So next up, we have the wing spar assembly going in. Uh, thing, thing about the wing spar was uh, I typically have trouble with getting them to fit through the plastic through their slots because they're typically too scaled large or there's too much paint on it or something and then there's uh, the getting the actual wing around it which I'm having problems with on another build right now uh, kind of making me stop working on it but yeah so here we have parts of the engine this is part of the cooling system in the firewall uh, this is like the yeah, you can sort of see it. This is like the, uh, I don't know what, I guess this is, this isn't really carburetor. This is, I don't know what you'd call this part. It's front part on the engine. Uh, I'm not the biggest engine expert, but. So here we have the iconic engine of the P-47 and the air scoop. Uh, so I used mostly tester on this, uh. I use tested metallic and silver and uh, gloss black for the rear part of the firewall or the front part of the firewall. Uh, the, that black is actually a that's supposed to be a fire retardant paste type stuff. It's supposed to it's a fuel tank sealant, but they also use it as a fireproofing to make sure that if the engine were to catch fire, it doesn't immediately burn the pilot by going through the rivet holes in the firewall. Um, it's really horrible stuff to work with. Uh, and then uh, I also did the push rods on the engine in black. Uh, and I was going to try making little connectors for it, but uh, for the spark plugs and stuff, but it didn't really turn out the way I wanted to. Uh, mainly because I didn't have access to any thread and the wiring I had was just a little too big. So here you get a closer look of the air scoop that comes in two parts. Um, why it came in two parts I really didn't know. Um, this is for the air cooling system. Uh, two parts went together quite nicely. I used uh, some sort, I think it's like a dull gray. I have multiple grays. I think it was a Tamiya XF20 medium gray, I think. Uh, I'm not too sure on that uh, after the fact. Uh, but yeah. Okay, and here is the almost completed engine as it doesn't have that knob on the front. But uh, it went together quite nicely. Uh, there, there were two locator pins on the, on either part of the radial engine, and then on the firewall. Then you can see the marks for the uh, knob thing. And on the inside, the cool thing was it had the uh, poly caps, so I could get the propeller to spin and come off quite easily without the propeller actually falling off. Now here we have the wings, the engine cowling, and the fuselage halves. Uh, next to each other, ready for assembly. Uh, next, we're going to get a close picture of the engine cowling, and it drifts away. <laughs> Here we have the flap assembly. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, flap assembly. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get too much, too many pictures of the painting process, but here's the finished build.